uh, in the end, you treated me professionally. And uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm giving you something. I'm giving you cooperation. Right. I promised you cooperation that night. I gave it to you. The only question I didn't answer was on the advice of my attorney, and I would have answered that. That's right. what she was doing from the beginning. Right. Yeah, she was. Right. She was because I just told you, once you've done it, you're either going to kill her or get caught. There's, there's no other solution. It's not that, you know. And, and that sounds cold and cruel. Yeah, it was. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a soldier in me. A soldier doesn't well, matter why. Say. He just does or dies. Okay. I was about to say, that's part of the, I guess, the operations order there. Yeah, know? and it, I, I, I'm trying to impress on you, though, it was nothing sexual or, or pleasurable. Well, it, you talk about dreadful. being a pro. It was dreadful. It was dreadful. You asked me, wasn't it you that asked me, what's it like to cut someone's head off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it was dreadful, and the only thing you can do is so dreadful that the only thing you can do is go on autopilot. I told you it wasn't real. Right. Okay. That's all you yeah, can do. It was surreal. It was yeah, yeah. It's, it's so dreadful. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking dreadful that all you can do is do your duty and go on autopilot. It's the same as combat soldiers that told me from Vietnam. They told me the same thing. They'd see bodies, you know, with guts, you know, roped all over the place, heads blown off, and it didn't. It wasn't real. It just didn't look real, you know. Yeah. yeah but it's dreadful. There was no pleasure. Uh, or anything else. And one may say, well, you're the one to, that chose to make money by killing. There's other ways to make money. There's bank robbery and so forth. Well, you know, in retrospect, I regret not attempting a bank robbery. I really do. Because all of this shit got me nowhere but caught. Okay. And so I might have been caught robbing a bank. But if I'd have scored, if I'd have got five grand, I could, I could live off that for over half a year in the woods. You know. And so, yeah, yeah, it's a, but as to why I chose to kill for money, that was, part of that was rage against society, sociopathic rage against society, uh, against all those people that are now coming forward and so forth. How did you find Walter Goddard? He must have called you, or did you get him off my cell phone? Well, so, was it that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this, and, and, and you know, there again, we're here to, we're here to, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I promise you, I, when we did a deal, I promised you cooperation. Well, well, and uh, by all rights, I shouldn't be talking to you. My attorney's warned me a million times, don't talk to no one without an attorney. But uh, I'm not telling you nothing that, you know, you know what I mean? Right. Well, uh, we're talking about history. Right. And uh, I was going to save the history for the profiles, but there'll be psychologists and psychiatrists, so they'll want to go with that. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to, I, I'm going to dig my heels in. I don't want federal custody. They're going to send me to Supermax. I just know they are. Huh? What about it? No. Uh, they sent Ted Kaczynski there. All the notorious people. Listen, Rudolph went there and he only killed one person, and indirectly too. Okay? He killed one woman with a bomb, and another guy had a heart attack. Okay. He only killed one person. Yeah, yeah. He only. Oh no, he killed two of the police. Yeah, officers. the police officer. He killed two. He only killed two people. Okay. Well, and they sent they sent Kaczynski there. He only killed I think two people, but he was the Unabomber. Right. And he's in Supermax. Right. So it's where they send the notorious, infamous people. Well, okay. I mean, they're sending my ass to Supermax, man. Well, I mean, that, that, it, it's it, it's debatable on what on on. Who, who calls you notorious and who calls you, mm. you know, just a, a mad guy? <laughs> well, you know what, what, I mean? what did the thing, the infamous, you know, Jack the Ripper, whatever you want to put it, yeah. okay? But, of course, at that first they got to convict me. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, you know. One. And if they, you know, and, and if they want to spend uh, a million dollars, uh, two million to convict me, and then... Uh, then uh, another two million to, to get death, and then uh, another eight million to uh, defend the death penalty, and get around and get around to executing me 17 years from now when I'm 78 years old, and I'm, <laughs> I'm decrepit and anything. Hey, they can do it. Who's going to be the one to have to have to call you notorious though? Me. You are. I'm infamous. You are. My God. I mean, I've, I've read a little of the news that my lawyers brought me a little bit, but I'm, you know, I don't really want to read it. It's true. Curl your fucking hair, man. You know, I mean, 
the drifter with a mean streak. <laughs> that's what the that's what the AJC article, a drifter with a mean streak. I, or, or no, misfit, misfit with a mean streak. Yeah, yeah. Well, misfit I am. Well, it's true. <laughs> I do have a mean streak. Uh, I think they don't mean. understand. Is there's something a little more than that, though. That they don't understand that, except for this rampage, I was the injured party. <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. They have screwed you and have hidden me every, every which way society has. They called the police on me 30 times when they were the transgressor trying to get and me. And people in the park type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of society trying to get me in trouble. If they had their way, they would tell lies to the cop. The cop would arrest me and send me to the penitentiary, take my dog away, and ruin my life just because they don't want to be wrong. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. You talk about cruel and heartless, man. And you talk about, you know, hey, kill the motherfuckers. You know, you start getting that thing, you know, you just raise against society. Well, you're getting, you're getting a little bit into the, in the, your, you know, more than what we're trying to discuss here. Well, what are you trying to get at except a biography? Well, that's basically it. I, I'd like to have a biography of you. Well, don't, you're not going to give this to the press. I'm saving no, this book. No, 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 no. No, no I'm saving this for a book, man. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, the, hey, I've got to keep some money on the book. Right. I okay, I've got lots to do. I understand that. <laughs> and no one's called you up and said, hey, i got some money for Gary Hilton. i, I got to get some money on the books. Right. Okay. And my coverage, you know, I, I deliberately kept coverage of me limited. You notice when they try to do the perp walk, uh, I insist that we run, I, and, and the debate is fine with them, you know. Man. Yeah, I got the best on and everything, the sooner they get me into that car, the better, although they don't even have to get me in the car, they could walk me right through. And I'm the one that insists on running to well, the car, you know. You, did you see the way we, did you see yeah, it on TV? Yeah, we, 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 oh yeah, running, I'm the one that wants to do that. You see, I was going, I was leading them, and they'll, they'll open that door, and one, another one open that door, and I'm the one that just dives in head first, you know. So kind of like a Hollywood celebrity that's been bad and now is trying, <laughs> trying to, you see what I mean? The, the more you limit it, it's the, the bigger demand it makes. Now, if I'd have come walking out like Eric Rudolph, that would said, well, oh, he's a fucking smug is all he is. But when I come, <laughs> right, an idiot. But, you know, when I come running out of there and then dive into the car wearing the vest, it, it's, it's a mistake. Yeah. You got a style about you, Mr. It's, it's, it's the style. You style. Yeah. See, I'm saving it. Your gravitas now, now, in there. Now, yeah. So, so you see, everybody's got to. No one's got pictures of me either. But I got, I got five thousand pictures of me. Yeah, five thousand pictures right. from 1990 on, documenting everything, all my daily lives. Nothing unlawful. Nothing unlawful. Yeah, I got it. I got it. No one has a, a damn picture of me. As far as I know, except mug shots, <laughs> and no one has a single picture of me not under arrest. No one. Nobody. I, I think, actually, Goddard has. You have? Have you found some? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, North Carolina has two of me uh, that a woman took. Yeah, that a woman took in, uh, in uh, Transylvania County. Yeah. Oh, you've come across some more? Well, I wouldn't right. be I wouldn't be surprised because people are we're not we're not I'm like the lone ranger we're not we're not in this for the I mean you can you can have the book deal or whatever we're not in it for that we're, what we're, what other pictures have you come up with tell me come on I've been telling you well yeah oh, it's okay you ask him what's the uh, no we 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 got some pictures of you from uh, is it out west somewhere yeah I don't think it's out west? Rainier, I think. Mount Rainier? Mount Rainier. You mean Mount St. Helens, more than likely. I was at St. Helens. But I was at Rainier, too. But I only spent an hour, well, hour or two there. Well, but you, you can't have about, You talked about wanting to be a guide or wanting to be a, 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 a teacher. And someone just took a, 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 a picture of me. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Someone took a picture of me, and I know who it was. It's another fucking woman. Women are just... There was a guy in the New York Times Sunday Magazine. He was of uh, Iranian descent, uh, American born and everything, but he was Iranian. And uh, he was decided he was a photographer, and he was just had a little off time. He was going to do a project of traveling to each state capital, taking pictures of it, and making a montage, and this and that. He, and he, was, he rented an uh, uh, bought an old van. He was going to do it. Well, he's taking uh, an airplane to pick up his van the first leg of his trip, and he explained to a woman what he was doing. Uh, I'm going to go to East, and she's, mm-hmm, uh, Iranians. 
they killed him. And while he was asleep, she took pictures of him, snitched on him. And if this guy's touring East Bay Castle, it gets harder and harder. They were like waiting for him. They got him on the list. He was arrested several times and detained. He was refused entry. He probably had to stop it because this one woman, he had told about his project in all sincerity and truthfulness, you know, took his picture while he was asleep on the airplane and snitched on him, okay? <laughs> and so there's a woman in North Carolina at a picnic area. She drove up. She's just a piece of white trash, and her boyfriend apparently was driving it. And I think she was drunk, too. She was acting like she was drunk. She was being very poor and everything, no real inhibitions. And everything. They drove up there, and she set out the window. I had, you know, my technical clothing on, as, as usual. You know, presenting my typical spectacle, you know, as, you know, I was being the spectacle. The long, the, the long, you yeah, know, my stick, doing my stick. And she said, uh, and what, uh, is your costume supposed to be? You know? Yeah, smart and off, basically. And I said, I'm the prophet of microfiber. <laughs> <laughs> but you said, it never caught on. You can't even get this stuff anymore, right? It just fucking blew her mind. She didn't know what the fucking I was about to say, and, she probably didn't appreciate yeah, she, she didn't, and and I, 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 yeah, and I'm almost sure it was t the photograph was taken from where she was sitting, and I'm 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 almost sure it was her a piece of white trash. She takes this photo, she saves it for four months or whatever, and then comes forward in here. Here's the photo. She ain't nothing but a piece of drunk white trash herself. Okay, so I, I guess you have gotten. Well, yeah, I, I guess there's actually a lot of pictures. Well, of this me is, that this is what I'd like to know from you. One thing I'd like to know from you: where all have you hiked? Where all have you been uh, all over the United States as far as... Uh, oh, uh, I know what you're getting at, the unsolved murders. I, I'm no, 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 no. I, I, I'm not talking about any unsolves. I'm talking about... Uh, what I'd like to know is, is is how accomplished of a hiker are you? Oh, I mean, it, it, you've, been to, you've been to... Been to but any, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I want to tell you something. I've never met anyone, mm -hmm. ever. And people are full of shit on this, too. But I've never met anyone, anywhere, any way that has the time in the woods and the time on the trail that I have. That I have. I've never worked full time anyway in my life, except for the U.S. Army. And for the six months I went straight, I worked full time, okay, in 79, 80. I worked six months. Other than that, I've never worked full time. I've been a criminal, okay? <laughs> I was a career criminal in lawful charity from 73 to 93, okay, for 20 years. Okay, and so I never worked full time. I've been a criminal. I couldn't get up and go to work every morning, and I've just been a soldier. It, it took me to the '90s to really realize what I was doing. I was just replicating what I did in the army. Is all I was doing. I was doing field maneuvers. I was replicating what I did in the army. I was, and I, I, I came to understand that I was just on perpetual field maneuvers. Is what I was. Hey, that's good enough. Some guys do it as a career. Nobody, but nobody. And I've had the dogs, too, which means I always have a hiking companion. One thing that holds a lot of people back from getting a lot of time in the woods, again, is an activity is not valid unless you're with someone else. That's, our human, that's our human nature. Right. We, and, and so, of course, it's hard. You, you ask ten, ten people, oh, do you hike? Oh, yeah, hiking. Yeah, I hike. Well, let's go next Saturday. Well, no, I got a wine tasting next Saturday. Right? You know. That, that kind of stuff, right? In other words, they're, when the pavement ends, they get nervous, <laughs> you know, basically. And, but I had the dogs. And a golden retriever, man, the, the worse the weather is, the more cold, nasty, wet, dreary, bitter, windy the weather is, the better they like it. They're duck dogs, they're game dogs, they're bird dogs. That's when you, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I always had a hiking buddy. That was the revelation in my life. That was at the time I ceased to become the poor tortured sociopath that was trying to fit in but couldn't, that never could, and it would never be accepted anyway. I went from that to, to never being alone and understanding my place and purpose in life and the true nature of my personality and what my fate was, which was to be alone. I, I came to understand that was my fate, my, to be alone, that, that was me. And to try to be something else would be to ensure unhappiness, okay? And that, that really picked up uh, after it, in uh, 91 when I started dog running, but it, it, it got going in the uh, 80s, uh, from 84 on. And ask Walter Gard, he'll, he'll tell you, man, uh, the, all the stuff I, 
want to go, I'd go out into the uh, Oconee National Forest every weekend and just, or even around here in, in uh, Gwinnett County, it wasn't developed like it, like it is now in 84. Oh my God, man, huge tracts of woods along the Yellow River and so forth. They're all subdivisions now, but you could just go hiking in Gwinnett County. Hell, they had a deer season in Gwinnett County, you know, then. A uh, gun season, okay, and in, in like as late as 83, they had a gun season, and, and you know, uh, uh, I, I knew a contractor, he's a cement slab contractor, and he'd just, while the screws were pouring the, the, the thing, he'd take his gun in the hunting season and sit out there to see a deer, okay, and so you could have, and so I've just been driven, it, like you, you're desperately, you guys are desperately running from it, your existential awareness, well, in a sense, I am too. And uh, I was a, a hobby runner before. I, I started hobby running in 78, I told you, you know, and that's how I met my wife, long distances and everything. And I did that, and starting in 84, I read it, I discovered the North Georgia Mountains. And by then, I'd been pavement running for six years. And so the, uh, the field maneuvers in the mountains was just replicating what I did as a paratrooper. And it was a new form of exercise. And I'm telling you, when you're in shape, uh, there's just something, to a certain personality, there's something totally addicted to going, like the ever ready bunny, to going and going and going and entering, and entering a state that I call hyper fatigue. When you enter hyper fatigue,